Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another discussion video. Yes, he is back. Today's video is talking about the Mecha Frieza reboot leader. You guys might think it's a little bit weird to create an entire video based around one leader, but believe it or not, there's actually a lot of stuff to talk about just based around the fact that they're rebooting Mecha Frieza. There's some ruling stuff, there's some deck building stuff, there's a lot to talk about, and honestly, at this point, guys, he could be either absolutely broken or super duper trash. Uh, there's basically a lot to talk about in, in that regard and figuring that out. So if you guys are new here, definitely subscribe, hit that bell, so miss a video. If you want to help the channel out, go down in the description, use my link to TCG Player if you want to buy or pre-order any of the cards you see in today's video. If Mecha Frieza ends up being broken, then you might want to go down to that link and pick up some cards for the deck. But we're going to parse that out in today's video, guys. So that being said, let's just get started. So Let's just say you're new here to Dragon Ball Super, and if you guys have been playing for a long time, bear with me for just a minute here, but I'm going to just basically give you a, a brief recap of why this leader is being rebooted and what made it so broken in the first place. So what you see on the screen here, this card effect text for Mecha Frieza is its original pre-errata text. The original Mecha Frieza leader is currently errated and doesn't does something different. But firstly, what it does here is when you activate an extra card, you can take a life instead of paying its energy cost. That's the effect on both sides. But then on the back side, you can basically reduce the cost of a two cost extra card or less and uh, make that cost zero, right? So in the format this deck dominated, it was pretty much the only deck you could play uh, with, a, with a confident ability to do well. Like, yes, people played other decks, of course, during Mecha Frieza format, but really there was just one event where Mecha Frieza ran an absolute monk. That was the San Jose Regional out in California. This leader actually came out in Draftbox uh, 1 or 2. I think it was Draftbox 1. Yeah, it must have been Draftbox 1 right after set two it was kind of like that side set i know some people get get the chills whenever whenever a draft box is mentioned and yes i guess you could say this draft box started the issue with with mecha frieza mecha frieza was played in set two but it wasn't anywhere near as dominant until we got to set three where this leader got more cards that really allowed it to take advantage of that ability to basically use extra cards whenever you want it right like one of the first ones that came out in set one was cold bloodless this card was incredibly broken with mecha frieza basically on both sides whether it was your turn your opponent's turn if they were playing something to interrupt you or you just wanted to basically you know negate the skills of any battle card they played because deflect wasn't a, a, a thing yet at this point so with that in mind you're able to do that for free and you're able to play other extra cards like planet vegeta like encouraging presence manaka most of you guys probably wouldn't even know what that card is except for the fact that now you know set 10 zamasu plays that card which is kind of cool that card came back into relevancy because no one thought that card would ever be playable again after your mecha frieza but basically in, in those decks those cards were oftentimes coined as pot of greeds basically you play the extra card you get a life so that's your first draw and then you get a card from the deck either drawing or searching in the case of planet vegeta that was your other plus in terms of like the the pot of greed joke right and this deck of course was incredibly broken with sand teamwork kaba and also Mecha Frieza Apes. This is also complemented very, very much so by Unwavering Solidarity Shugesh, a super combo that is currently on the Dragon Ball Super Forbidden and Ban list. That card basically allowed you to super combo. If your leader was yellow, you got to play a three cost or less sand from your hand, completely ignoring energy costs. So uh, there was definitely, it was definitely an amalgamation of, of broken cards, that's for sure. I mean, Shugesh would later on become banned after Mecha Frieza got errated. So it kind of showed you that that card in and of itself was an issue. But Mecha Frieza was just so powerful that they decided to errata the leader and pretty much errata its unplayability which no one really complained about because the leader was just way too broken in the first place so basically the errata was this basically you could only use this effect during your opponent's turn to pay life to activate extra cards and i believe on the on the unawakened side they added a once per turn clause to that which on the uh, awakened side I don't think they uh, they added that. So basically, they neutered the leader into unplayability. And one of the main reasons the leader also became unplayable was because uh, most leaders on the unawakened side, going into set four and beyond, they gave most leaders the ability to actually draw on that front side. So. You know, now that you couldn't awaken on turn one, which with pre Mecha Frieza, uh, pre errata Mecha Frieza rather, you could awaken on turn one with a combination of Planet Vegeta's and uh, Encouraging Presence Manaka's. So that turn one awaken allows you to get your draws really, really early, as where, you know, set four on where they started printing leaders that could draw on their unawakened side. So basically being errata as unplayability, as well as sort of being power crept, but if the leader was kept at full power, he would have been vastly, vastly strong going into at least like sets four and five, and then who knows from there. It's actually kind of funny. If you take Mecha Frieza and unerrata him and put him in today's format, 
I'm not even sure if he if he does all that much, especially without Shugesh, because the way Agar is right now, you're gonna get pressured so hard on turn two, turn three that uh, I don't know if you necessarily want to be taking a lot of life super early with extra cards, especially if you fill your deck with extra cards. Let me in the comments below what you think about that. But anyways, now that we're past like the regular Mecha Frieza stuff. Let's talk about the new leader. So we're going to read the new leader here and we're going to explain this really crazy ruling thing that either makes it really, really good or absolutely unplayable. So let's take a look. So unawakened permanent, you can only activate extra cards from your hand once per turn permanent. When activating a mono yellow extra card from your hand, you may add one card from your life to your hand. If you do reduce the energy cost of that card by one yellow. Okay. So here's the ruling problem right here. I'm pretty sure this is unprecedented leader text or effect text in general. I can't think of any card in the game, and even after doing a quick search through, I can't see any card in the game that specifically reduces energy cost by color circle, if that makes sense. Like, there are tons of cards that reduce the energy cost by one or reduce specified cost by one, but this one specifically says by one yellow, and I'm pretty sure it's unprecedented. Now, the ruling comes in this, right? Let's say we want to use Cold Bolas with this leader. Uh, does this permanent say make the cost of Cold Bolas zero in terms of making it free and you just take a life from your hand to activate it, just like the old leader? Or does it say you're only reducing the specified cost by one yellow? If you're reducing the specified cost by one yellow and not reducing the total cost, then Cold Bolas just costs one generic uh, energy, right? It doesn't cost uh, zero energy, it costs one generic. So you could pay like a green, a red, whatever for that Cold Bolas. That's what is uh, being disputed right now. As of today, as at the time of recording, uh, there hasn't been a definitive answer yet. I kind of think they're intending it to make the cost zero. But again, I don't know their intention. We're gonna have to wait to see like a, a Q and A. I've seen arguments for both ways that again, this is unprecedented skill text in this text. It specifically says reduce the energy cost. Normally they differentiate from energy cost and specific cost. But when you're looking at reducing one yellow, exactly a lot of times that can be construed as specified cost. So it's very, very uh, confusing there. Basically, if it reduces the cost to zero, it's very, very good. Uh, if it reduces the cost to one colorless, that's going to be very, very bad. Uh, that's just probably going to be unplayable because, you know, taking a life to, to pay one colorless for Bloodlust or pay one colorless for Planet Vegeta, I don't know. That's it's going to end up being uh, pretty costly in my opinion. But who knows? I could be totally wrong about both these scenarios. It could still be good if it only reduces specified cost. We'll have to kind of wait and see. But anyways, let's get on with the rest of the effect here. So when this card attacks, draw one. That's basically, you know, what a leader like this needed. You have to be able to draw on your front side unless you have some other type of insane abilities that kind of make up for that later on this leader gets the draw, which is nice. Awaken, untap one, draw one, always solid. And then Mecha Frieza, the, I can't even read what that says, Resurrected Monarch. So permanent, when activating a mono yellow extra card with energy cost of two or less from your hand, you may add one card from your life to your hand if you do activate that card without paying its energy cost. So this, this side of the effect is far more clear. This, this side of the effect basically just tells you, take a life, use the card for free, you're good to go, my guy. Like it basically tells you exactly what it what it's intended to do. And the front side is very, very different. So I can understand why that ruling context is, is very misconstrued there. Hopefully we get an answer on this stuff very, very soon. When this card attacks, draw one and then auto once per turn. When you activate a mono yellow extra card from your hand, choose one of your opponent's battle cards and switch it to rest mode. So nicely being able to do that during your opponent's turn, like you get to activate, like let's just say uh, time magic for instance and then you also get to rest a battle card so that's a that's a pretty solid skill right there uh just on the face of it and there is also a unison coming out with the leader as well meta cooler mechanical contempt it's kind of crazy that meta cooler is such like an obscure character and it's gotten so many unisons it's kind of honestly uh, nuts to see but anyways rejuvenate once per turn remove five markers from this card place one card on this card in the nose drop area then place top card of your deck in your life Auto once per turn, if leader card's a yellow Frieza card, when you activate a yellow extra card with an original cost of one or more from your hand, add a marker to this card, and then activate main plus or minus zero, plus, uh, place one mono yellow extra card with an energy cost of one or more from your drop under this card and draw one. Okay, so Rejuvenate makes a lot of sense here because you can continue to take life with this leader's skill uh, by, by paying life, right? So uh, by activating extra cards. So the unison having Rejuvenate definitely makes a lot of sense for this leader. So you can kind of, you know, cycle that, get more life, use more extra cards, do that whole thing over and over again. 
the rejuvenate here is definitely definitely very costly you pay one uh sorry you pay two he comes in with two markers and he can gain more markers but only when you use extra cards he doesn't inherently give himself markers so can you use an extra card every single turn or even every other turn basically you and your opponent's turn can you do that enough to boost this guy up to five markers I can see that being just like a little bit tough, but uh, who knows, maybe. Uh, a lot of people are saying this Unison isn't all that great, and I can definitely see that. Uh, but I do think this leader wants to play around with a yellow rejuvenate Unison. So uh, maybe there'll be some other options there in the future that we can look at. But Unison, not too important. The leader and this ruling uh, ambiguity, that is the much, much more important thing. But real quick, guys, want to talk about some extra cards that I think are very, very powerful to use with this leader. Of course, we have Cold Bloodlust. Go get your alternate art copies now. I think they're like $2 at the time of recording. If this leader ends up being good, you're going to want your alternate art of Cold Bloodlust. It's, it's, it just looks super nice. Uh, lately, I've been using pretty much the regular images of cards, but here I had to place the alt art Cold Bloodlust. I think it looks super nice, and I also wanted to recommend it to you guys to go pick it up. But Vegeta's Final Flash, this is a card that's been popular in the meta over the last like two sets or so. Uh, it's been just a solid answer card. It's basically a Cold Bloodlust you can use uh, during either player's turn, but it has to be during the battle step. But it definitely has some super solid applications and this is going to be one of those cards in tandem with planet vegeta you can actually use on your turn so that you can use like a negate or a counterattack or other cards like that during your opponent's turn and basically get your leader's effect off during both players turns if you would like to do that and then planet vegeta of course we talked about it with the original mecha frieza it's one of the most broken cards if this leader can just take life and use extra cards for free basically taking a life self-awakening searching any sand in your deck is definitely a solid effect Universe 9 Assemble has the potential to be absolutely amazing on the backside of the leader, basically taking the life to use this whole thing for free, draw two cards, and put a Universe 9 in play. That can obviously be very, very good. And if we think the front side of the leader works as intended, this could even be a one cost draw to play a guy like that could actually be pretty insane so uh hopefully again the leader is ruled the way that uh makes it the most powerful hopefully not overpowered but we definitely want it to be playable at least right and a lot of people said reboot soul striker wasn't gonna be any good when it first came out people will say that about this leader as well i think once that leader ambiguity is kind of taken care of if it works the way we hope it does i i think it's gonna actually be quite strong freeze a call another offensive extra card you can use although granted i don't think this card will be very very strong in the deck because I don't really think you want to play a pure Frieza archetype deck in this. Like usually the Frieza archetype stuff works best in Lemon Lime Frieza where you can actually pop them off to untap energy and draw additional cards. This leader doesn't quite give you that same type of synergy. So I think you're probably gonna be better off with a card like Planet Vegeta, uh, but who knows? Maybe if there is like a good mono yellow Frieza archetype. I'd also, I also don't think the stuff that coming out in set 12, I don't think works great with uh, Reboot Frieza either because that seems to be tied specifically to like, you know, turning your life up and down, which I think only pretty much that leader pretty much handles. But anyways, Giant Ball, amazing extra card. It's always been a, a pretty much a direct upgrade to Crusher Ball, basically also drawing a card on top of tapping a card. And the fact that Mecha Frieza can use it uh, by taking a life almost in some scenarios makes like an extra cold bubble us especially if that card has the effect of you know uh, activating its effect when it attacks right so if you can giant ball that and prevent its act, uh, effects from going off you're basically getting extra copies of cold bubble us there which is really really nice and the one last thing i really like this leader for uh, as, again as long as it works the way we're hoping it works it's a new generic yellow leader which actually feels very very good because you know the most generic yellow leader in the game's history was broly the awakened threat this leader saw so many wins so many top cuts with the most crazy like yellow engines height of mastery storm uh, its own broly chain like this leader was so generically good and then it got errated into being very very specific to its archetype and then since then we've gotten yellow go tanks which is an, an amazing yellow generic leader and it gets some benefits when your opponent activates extra cards which funnily enough might give you an edge against the uh, the mecha frieza matchup but anyways mecha frieza offers you another generic option for a yellow leader there, there's no archetype tied to this you can just play a good amalgamation of yellow cards and as long as your extra cards synergize with your deck you know whether it's planet vegeta searching sands or the different counter attacks you're using whatever the case may be you're going to get some type of benefit out of using mecha frieza but moral of the story guys we gotta wait and see how that ruling ambiguity kind of shapes up. I'm hoping that yeah, it pretty much reduces the cost of extra cards on the Unawakened side to zero. I'm really hoping it doesn't just say, you know, basically pay a colorless for, for said extra card because you're probably gonna play mono yellow in this, although it could be yellow blue, but I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But anyways, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I'm pretty excited, assuming it works the way I hope it does. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.